Good morning and welcome to my show. I'm your host, Danny Graham, and I both invite and encourage you to come walk with me on the road to wisdom. Come on, y'all. Let's get to walking. Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Danny Graham, and of course, I'm your host. Welcome to another edition of The Road to Wisdom. I hope that you are having a fantastic morning. Uh, I am. I woke up, felt great, got up here, and uh, I'm recording the show now, and I'm ready to go ahead and get into this topic. Um, I want to give a shout out to an individual, uh, uh, his parent, parents um, may be watching, um, his father, his mother, and his grandmother, I mean, his grandfather, um, that's going to be Mr. Sims Owens. Um, he did a fantastic job last night uh, at, a, at a men's ministry we had. Uh, he gave, a little, gave us a little sermonette. It was very inspiring. Talk about Jonah and the whale, or Jonah and the fish, and uh, he did a very good job. So I want to give him a shout out. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get into this right here. And um, this is called, uh, the show we're going to talk about today is Do We Feel Blessed? Do we feel blessed? Or is it just cool to say that? And I know you're probably saying, Danny, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I know it's a lot of times. Uh, I'm not trying to judge people. I'm just very observant. Um, I guess it's a it's a a product of me being in, in law enforcement. I watched a lot of things. I watch a lot of things and just observe things. But I notice a lot of times when people in all different genres, all different professions, if they win an award or something. They say, usually a lot of times, not all the times, but a lot of them will say, um, giving an honor to God, my Lord and Savior, blah, 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 or, or thank God, thank this, this, this. And, and and some of them I'm pretty sure are sincere. But I think some of them are just doing it because it sounds good. It sounds like it's the right thing to do. Because we've seen some people that will say that in a war show, then later on in life we see different things they do. And let me say, let me put this, this disclaimer, I'm not judging. Nobody's perfect. We all do sinful things. We all have done sinful things in our life because the flesh is. When they say things, their actions don't line up to it with their words. So I'm try, I try to be very cognizant of what I say and what I do in my actions because people are watching. People are always watching, especially when you get out and declare things from the rooftop or on national TV or whatever platform you have. You have to make sure that what you're saying matches your actions. I want to show you a clip of what I'm talking about. There's going to be a clip showing different celebrities in all different professions, sports, music, um, um, acting, all kind of stuff, and they're going to say, and um, what they say when they get their awards their, at their acceptance speeches. And some of them, are, I'm pretty sure, are sincere. But some of them, I don't know. I'm going to let you be the judge of it. And let's go ahead and get into that. Yeah, um, yeah, I want to thank God uh, for putting me in this amazing position that I am today. Um, everything I do, I do it through him, and I'm extremely blessed. First of all, I want to thank God, man. Um, I mean, nothing's possible without God, obviously. We both really feel like this award really goes to God. It's totally been inspired by the Holy Spirit, and we just pray that many millions of lives will be affected by it. Thank you. I also want to say thank you to God. Uh, none of this can be possible without, uh, you know, God leading your way and, you know, uh, writing your path for you. So uh, one more round of applause for that as well. I'd like to thank God for this experience and all my experiences. I just want to thank God for uh, blessing me for this award. I have to thank God for just this experience and for my family and my friends and for my boyfriend that's here with me tonight. Now, first off, I want to thank God because that's 
who I look up to. He's graced my life with opportunities that I know are not of my hand or any other human hand. No, I want to thank God. Um, I know none of this is possible. I'm up here to say thank you to God for giving me this ability, for blessing me, for shaping me, for chastising me, for teaching me, for punishing me, for allowing me to be a vessel and touch people around the world. I would not be here with the ease and grace I have in my heart without my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. God, I love you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for putting me through what you put me through, but I'm here and I'm happy. <laughs> I just want to say thank you so much, not only to God, but to Jesus. First and foremost, man, Thank you to the man above. Uh, without his blessing, without his honor, I wouldn't be standing here today. So thank him. Uh, I'm very, very blessed. Glory be to God. I claim this victory in the name of the Lord. I want to thank God for my mother and my father who've supported me since I was young. I wouldn't be here without him. He's really blessed me. He's put me in this position. So I want to say thank you so much. And God, God who believes us in, in us all and uh, who's given me this moment in this lifetime that I will hopefully carry to the end of my lifetime into the next lifetime. You know, first and foremost, you know, I got to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I just want to thank Jesus for letting me be a part of this. And he's put a, a voice in my throat for everybody who's a writer, whoever's involved in all of this. I just think it's such a gift. Thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the power of Jesus, I will miss in Germany tonight. I want to thank God. I always do that when I'm up on a big platform in front of a bunch of young faces. I say, I love God. That's my thing. I love him. And you should too. And of course, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I thank you, my King, for saving me. My Lord, my Savior, my rock, my salvation. Give me the glory tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. I want to thank Jesus Christ. You know, first and foremost, I have to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for blessing me with the talents to play this game. He has shown me that uh, it's a scientific fact that gratitude reciprocates. Um, in the words of the late Charlie Lawton, who said, when you got God, you got a friend, and that friend is you. Now, you heard uh, some of those people said, and I, I think some of them were sincere. Uh, but some of them, based on their actions, <laughs> in particular, Draymond Green, I'm just going to call him out. And Russell Westbrook, I'm going to call him out. Um, Justin Bieber, some of those people, some of their actions don't seem like they're um, living a God-fearing life. I could be wrong. Yeah, like I said, I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to point out observations that I have, but I, I tend to see that a lot. And, and sometimes and I, I hope I'm not being too critical or, or judgmental because that's not my intent to be judgmental. Um, because like I said, we all make mistakes, but sometimes I, I, it, you just see things and you're like, Hmm, I don't know. He, he's saying this, but it's not his act. His words and actions aren't lining up. Well, she's saying this, but her words and actions aren't lining up. So, that's just something I want to bring to your attention and, and, um, as an individual. Do we really, the question I ask, do we really feel blessed or is it just something that we're saying because it sounds good? I know a lot of times you can be walking out and you meet somebody, hey, how, how you doing? I'm blessed. And sometimes I wonder, people personally that I may know that say that, I'm like, do you really feel blessed? Because you just said earlier this morning we're blessed and then later this afternoon, you are complaining and moaning and groaning and nothing's going your way. And you're always getting done, dealt wrong. And you're always getting the short end of the stick. You're always doing this. You never seem to be happy. I've never, ever heard you talk about what God has done in your life, the good things. All you talk about is the bad things. So that makes me wonder, do people really feel blessed when when they say that? Or is it just, something, is, is it just a cliche? Or is it just a catchphrase? Um, so just food for thought for that. Food for thought for that. Now, um, one thing, another thing I've seen people do too, is they play with God, they, or they read the Bible, or they read whatever 
book that they're reading or whatever spiritual book they're reading the Quran or whatever the other name for a Bible for other religions. I don't know what it is, what you may call it. But they're reading and they'll take things out of context. But the, the, the King James Version that we read is very specific on how it feels about certain things. And here you're going to watch a clip. Um, and when it's, in, the, in the first part, this woman says in her Bible, in her book, she said God would be the grand marshal at like a gay pride um, event. And I'm like, huh? At a gay a gay parade event, she feels that her God would be the grand marshal at the event if he was here on earth. So I'm not sure where she got that from or, or how she deciphered that, but let's play it. Go ahead and play the video. Let you decide for yourself. will be attending pride events as this Catholic will. Jesus would be the grand marshal at the pride parade. I don't mean I about really, gay people, really I mean it. Amongst other religions, Christianity has always come under assault, demeaned, and constantly despised. Christianity has long been the target of intense criticism and derision. From ancient times to the present day, it has been maligned, mocked, and attacked by a variety of opponents. Here are people who think it is okay to mock Christianity. Take a look at this. This is Jack Black. In a musical promoting homosexuality, Jack Black played the role of Jesus. Well, the Bible says a lot of things, you know. Jesus Christ! Hey, how's it going? Jesus, doesn't the Bible say these people are an abomination? Oh, abomination? Yeah, but you know, it says the exact same thing about this shrimp cocktail. Jack Black's mocking of Jesus and the Holy Bible is incredibly offensive and disrespectful. Jesus and Christianity is always the one taking the heat. Hard to come by them trying this with any other religion. Now listen to this. A lot of people come up here and they thank Jesus for this award. I want you to know that no one had less to do with this award than Jesus. <laughs> he didn't help me a bit. If it was up to him, Caesar Milan would be up here with that damn dog. <laughs> so all I can say is, suck it, Jesus. This award is my God now. This is insane. It is a sign of disrespect for the divine and can have serious consequences. Not only does it show a lack of respect for the divine, but it also... She said, if he didn't catch that, that, that pretty much the heck with Jesus, that this, that award is her Jesus now, and that Jesus didn't give her any help in getting that award, any help. He didn't, I guess he didn't breathe life into her. He didn't give her the talent that she has. She she did that all herself. Just disrespectful. And the Jack Black thing, I, I used to be a fan of Jack Black, but hmm, after watching this, I don't know, because... Um, I know people just say, well, Danny, it's just acting. Yeah, but there's certain things. There's certain lines that you must draw. There's certain lines you must draw because when you mock God, it talks about mocking God in the Bible. And he's not going to bless you if you do something so sacrilegious or so um, blasphemous. I don't believe God's going to bless you. He's going to take his hands from around you and then... That's the, the, his, he's going to take his armor protection around you, and then Satan's going to have his way with you. And Satan is sitting back laughing, eating popcorn, and saying, hmm, I got another one, I got another one. So be careful what you say, and don't get pulled into this, this trap that, oh, it's just acting. No, there's certain things, there's certain lines you don't cross. You just don't do it. Let's continue. Also shows a lack of respect for those who believe in God. No matter what faith or beliefs you have, mocking God is wrong and should not be done. Listen to Christian Acceptance Speech, who has won an Academy Award as well as two Golden Globe Awards, including one for his role playing Dick Cheney in the movie Vice. Hear what he has to say in the Golden Globe Award Acceptance Speech. Thank you to uh, Satan for giving me inspiration on how to play this role. Satan is doing all he can to take center stage. He is gathering his children who are boldly disrespecting Christianity and the Bible. Hollywood is always ready to push narratives that insult Christianity. A few years ago, Netflix, the big tech streaming company, allowed on their platform a movie portraying Jesus as gay. In the show, you will see Jesus coming home with his gay partner to meet his family. Not only that, they also portrayed Mary, the mother of Jesus, as a weed smoker. The world loved this kind of shows and movies that make a mockery of Jesus. The show won an award. 
Seeing that the world loved the show and even congratulated them, they went on to release another show portraying Jesus as a drunk called The Last Hangover, and they won an award for it. In an ironic twist, the people receiving the award also mocked Jesus right on stage. The Last Hangover, Puerta dos Fundos. I never thought that we could say that, but thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We are here because of you. If you're not enjoying that, say something now. All right, we're we'll keeping doing that. Have you noticed that identifying Jesus as gay is now the new trend? That's what the mainstream media wants you to see. They are doing everything possible to implant into the church the ideology and acceptance of gay lifestyle. You know, I was on Twitter this week. See, that's ridiculous. I didn't even know these moves exist. In my opinion, they're going to hell. Uh, if blasphemous, that that is crazy. That is crazy. I did not I didn't I didn't even know that that exists. This right here is ridiculous. This right here is just another reason why I call the world today Solomon Gomorrah 2.0, because to portray Jesus as being gay and a drunkard is so is disrespectful, does not even say enough about it. This this is crazy. This is crazy. Weekend, and I read this tweet by Bishop Tobin, who is a Catholic bishop, and he comes out and he says that he wants to remind all Catholics not to support or engage in any pride uh, and participate yes. in any pride uh, parades or anything uh, supporting the LGBTQ community because it's against Christian values and that it's harmful to children. And I and I tweeted out that my Catholic children will be attending pride events as this Catholic will. And, you know, my faith always taught me, what would Jesus do? Yes. And I know Jesus would be attending that pride parade. With pride. And I also, with pride. And I also know that um, God is love. And Jesus is love. Yeah. And, and love is love. It's it's so the, sad. The part, and I don't know that they hide behind religion because that, I said... This is, this is crazy. This is crazy. I don't know what Bible they're reading, and and Whoopi Goldberg and that co-sign because she lives that that particular lifestyle. But they need to get back into the book because what they're reading is is not true, or they're not getting a clear understanding of it. And, and they seem to be highly intelligent women. But when you're doing stuff and when you dabble in sin, you put, you kind of put blinders on your eyes to particular parts of the Bible that specifically tell you that that sin is wrong. The world loves to put blinders on it. And sometimes we too as Christians love to put blinders on certain parts of the Bible, especially when it steps on our toes. But they they, they got blinders, they got blindfolds, all kind of crazy stuff. These ones that live this particular lifestyle. And it's not cool. And they're going to let the culture, they're going to let the world, they're going to let Satan keep those blinders on their eyes. And they're not going to lose the end. They're going to lose their blessings. And their blessing is eternal life. They get all these these wealth, these things on earth, all this wealth, all this power, all this notoriety, and they're just content with that. But they're failing to see the true prize, which is heaven, making it to heaven. That's the true prize for any Christian, for any person that has common sense, any person that can read and comprehend the Bible. The ultimate prize to all this on earth is to do a job. Well enough, walking in the word in the, the word of God, get judged by God, and God says, "Good job, welcome home." That is the ultimate prize. There is no award that can get that. There's no amount of money in your bank that can beat that. There is no amount, amount of number of houses you can have that can beat that. There's no amount of cars you can have to beat that. There is no love on earth that can beat that particular. Say the words and those those two cents. If God tells you, well done and welcome home. Your eternal home is heaven or wherever he's at. Wherever he's going to be at, you're going to be there. There's going to be no more sickness, no more dying. Just a world of unendless peace. Who in their right mind would not want to live there? But they get stuck in these sinful and unrighteous sensations that God has put in, has allowed us to have in these bodies. And you have to fight it because temptation is always around. It's always around. Satan and the enemy is always dangling temptation. Oh, here's some money. Oh, here's some sex. Oh, here's some power. Oh, here's some food. Here, here's whatever your temptation is. 
he's going to deal with you. And you gotta, you got to read the Bible. you got to ask for discipline. you got to ask for discernment because he is tricky. He is tricky. The best, the best, the most favorite people in the Bible, the God favorite, has been tricked. Temptation. Last night at, at the men's study, I was saying how to me, one of the most um, stupidest men in the Bible to me was Samson. Samson, Samson was favored by God, had all his strength, and was doing things, but he let his lust for Delilah, his stupidity, his, his arrogance said, I, I'm, I'm, I got the strength, nothing can hurt and stop me. He was so arrogant, so stupid that he told the very person who he loved his weakness, and she capitalized on it to get whatever money they gave her and power and notoriety. And was able to get the best of him. Cut his hair. They gouged out his eyes. They par par paraded him around town like a display idiot and goat and, and picked at him and, and whipped him and do all kind of crazy stuff. Lost his power because he got arrogant. Because he didn't realize he was truly blessed. He didn't appreciate the blessing that God gave him. A lot of these people here now, they're seeing all this crazy stuff, but I wonder what it's going to be like on Judgment Day when, when God starts re -account, you know, starts looking at their, their things that they said and starts saying, hmm, on this day you did this, on this day you did this, 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 and this. I wonder how they're going to feel then. Said this on this show once before. Jesus would be the Grand Marshal at the Pride Parade. You can see how boldly they use the name of Jesus Christ in their profanity. You don't see people in Hollywood using the name of the prophet Muhammad as profanity. You don't see people using the name of any of the false gods of Hinduism as profanity. You don't see people using the name of Allah as profanity, but you will see people using the name of Jesus Christ as an expletive. You will see people using the name Jesus Christ with a curse word, either before it, in the middle of it, or at the end of it. This is the world in which we live in. Christianity has unfortunately been subjected to a history of disrespect and unfavorable comparison with other religions. It has been regularly demeaned and constantly vilified by its detractors. Despite this, Christianity remains a major world religion with millions of adherents around the globe. Why do they hate Jesus this much? The answer is simple. Satan is the god of this world, and he will do everything possible to get the light of the gospel out. But we know that he has lost the battle even before it started. So count it all joy and remember that the world will hate what you believe in because the world hated Jesus when he was here on earth. Stay blessed. Subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you. The like guy said the best. The world hated Jesus when he was here, so they're gonna hate people that that love Jesus. So you gotta just have tough skin. You just gotta pray for God for tough tough skin, discernment for Lord, keep my head right, keep him keeping my feet firmly planted on spiritual doctrine. And when you feel like you're getting lost, Lord, pray for, for play for, pray for clarity, pray for discipline, pray for strength to get back on the right road and stay on the right track. There's gonna be times when you're gonna feel weak. There's gonna be times you, you're not gonna feel like doing stuff. There's gonna be times when you probably feel like you're not blessed. But every day that you wake up is a blessing. Every day that you wake up in your right mind is a blessing. Every day that you're able to walk and talk and do for yourself is a blessing. You just have to be able to realize that. Sometimes we take things for granted. You can't take blessings for granted because just the very fact that you wake up is a blessing because God didn't have to, God does not have to wake us up. He can snap his finger or do whatever he does and not and take us out. But every day he allows us to, to wake up another day and to talk about him and to spread the word and to be one of his soldiers in his army is truly a blessing. So I hope that this resonates with you and, and, and uh, the videos that I show you this, I hope it gave you an example of how Christianity is, is taking a beating, but we can't worry about what the world thinks. We have to worry about what God thinks and God wants us to spread his word and do the right thing. So I'm trying to do my part. Again, this is my two cents on this particular word. Do you really feel blessed? I hope that you do and realize that you are blessed each and every day that you wake up. Um, if this is, if someone comes to you in your path, and they reply, uh, 
you're not blessed. You just this and that. And there's no such thing as heaven or hell. And uh, I don't even know why you read the Bible. I don't know why you believe in God and Jesus. Then you tell them something like this. You just say, look, I choose to believe in the Bible because it's a reliable collection of historical documents that are written down by eyewitnesses during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses. They report to us supernatural events that took place in fulfillment of specific prophecies and claim that their writings are divine rather than human in origin. That comes from Pastor Vody Bakum. Please check him out on YouTube. If you haven't uh, ever watched my channel before, I'm going to ask you to do a few things. First thing I'm going to ask you to do is please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Next, I'm going to ask you to hit that notification bell because every time I upload something, it will notify you on whatever device you use to watch YouTube. Third thing I'm going to ask you to do is please hit the like button. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Fourth thing I'm going to ask you to do is please leave a comment. Any comment that you leave, I will read and respond back to you. And last but not least, watch my video in its entirety. Oh, one more thing. All my videos that you watch, I'm asking you to share at least with one person. And have that person share it with another person. And have that person share it with another person. I'm at 1,580 subscribers. I want to get to at least 4,000 before my birthday. My birthday is in August. So I can only do that with your help. And I can only do that with God's help. So I'm asking you, if you would, please just share this video and just hit the like buttons and, and keep it going. I want to try and grow the channel. Thank you. Um, as always, I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope that this video resonates with you. I hope that it gives you food for thought. And I hope that if you're not saved, if you have not given your life to Christ, that this show points you in the right direction, that this show makes you want to have a relationship and start a conversation with God. It's easy to talk to him. The same way I'm talking now, you talk to him. Make God your best friend because he's mine. So have a fantastic day. And until next time, until Friday, y'all stay blessed.